Hey everyone, it's Alex from Business Growth Bureau alongside Rupert Honeywood and today we're bringing you a video completely devoted to whether decision paralysis is actually crippling your business. So to start with Rupert, what could be the number one thing that's crippling people's businesses at the moment? Uh, well I think what tends to happen is uh, sometimes we get so overwhelmed with actually what's going on in our business mm. or what's perceived not to be working as well. Yeah. It's almost like rabbit and he headlights syndrome that you end up with so many messages coming into your brain at once, you end up by not really being able to make a decision about anything Thing. Or worse, still you can add by making some bad decisions. Yeah, so what, what are the kind of decisions are you talking about here? Are you talking about the growth of the company? Are you call, talking about just everyday decisions? What, what uh, specific decisions are you talking about? Um, well, I think, for, for example, one of the things we notice is that uh, naturally, because we do specialise in providing marketing assistance to business to help them to, uh, business owners to grow, grow and scale their businesses, yeah. um, people end up by, um, if things, they haven't got enough money coming into their business, they end up by cutting back on the very things they should be investing more time and money in. Okay. Okay, what kind of things are those? Um, so, for example, in our cases, uh, you may recall, uh, we do everything to do with lead generation, prospect nurturing, and sales optimization. So yeah. clients can get more sales. But what happens is people, perception is they run out of money, so they fail to invest. And because they're failing to invest, they are unable to then get themselves out of a, a big black hole. So it's a bit of kind of like a chicken and egg situation in terms of people stop investing because they feel like they haven't got any money, but then that stops all lead generation efforts. Uh, well, that, that's right. And um, uh, for example, in the coaching space, um, it can be quite an issue because uh, we've talked about in a previous video about the rule of three thirds. Yep. Um, but in real terms, if your um, uh, number of working days in the year is say 220 days a year, um, you, and divide that by three, you actually need to earn a decent crust over the uh, this 65 or 70 days, yep. whatever that is, and people forget that. So therefore, what they do is they fail to invest properly in generating a continual lead flow, dealing, creating new opportunities when uh, different pieces of work come to, to an end. Yeah, and also for people watching and listening, what are ways that they can identify that they, that they have decision paralysis? So how can they sit there and actually think about whether they are uh, say, let's say a victim of this? Um, I, I think a large part of it is that um, people sometimes going with the wrong mindset. They're going in uh, with a view to running what's classed as more as a lifestyle business rather than actually treating it as a proper business. Mm. E even if you're a one-person company, you should be going in with a proper business mindset. So that means, first of all, you're putting things in place to do with the rule of three thirds. If you're a coach, mentor, and just or explain it just real quickly. What is the rule of three thirds again? Just for people that either don't know about it or they need a refreshment. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so, for example, if you've got uh, 220 working days in a year after holidays and everything else to do with that, yeah. uh, divide that by three because you tend to find that about a third of your time is on billable work. Yeah. The other third of the time is spent actually um, prospecting, trying to bring in new opportunities. The other third, the final third, is based more on self-development, potential void periods, and that type of thing. Right, it's okay. So, so it's really important to actually make sure that you, do, you dramatically increase your billable time, and therefore you're investing now so you can deal with those periods of time when you're quieter, so you end up by being oversubscribed. I mean, something that you've just kind of touched on there about billable time, what a lot of people tend to forget, I find, is that we, um, what people, sorry, what people tend to forget is that you only, you only reap what you sow. So what people find is that they plug in, say, lead generation, they plug in these different experts, and they expect an instant result. And I understand that, especially when we spend our money and our time, two of the most expensive things out there. When you plug those kind of things in, you expect instant results. But they, people also forget that things do take time to compound out. We've got a video around the snowball effect to kind of demonstrate this point a little bit better. But also... You forget that things that you do now could take a year to come off. They could take six months, a year, 12 months, 18 months to come off. And it's about actually allowing time to nurture and grow properly. Is, is that a fair comment? Uh, yes, and that particularly applies if you've got a very high value product or service where you're in a, a trading in a very competitive space. Or it may be that the decision maker, the multiple decision makers involved in the purchase of your uh, product or service. Um, the, the other thing is as well is that People should also be factoring uh, times to deal with economic change. There are sometimes that things that happen out of our control. Um, and also, as part of that, you end up with uh, massive peaks and troughs. And what businesses need to be doing is actually putting everything in place uh, to deal with that. Um, and what we find as well, uh, speaking to a lot of uh, business owners or directors of companies, is that they know frequently they, sh they should do something about it. They will openly tell us, and it's a genuine... Um, reason they're giving us. 
Uh, but what actually happens is, so there, is a, there are different forms of investment. There's good forms of investment, which cost money, and there's bad forms of investment. When you're investing in marketing, it's a good form of investment. So if at the end of the Providing day... Providing it's done right. Exactly. If it's done right, and uh, you know, if you have to borrow money to actually invest in marketing, then borrow money to invest in marketing. If that's going to put your business in a better place in three or six months' time, it's a total no-brainer. And what we find is that people, because they're running, their perception is they're running more of a lifestyle business, they don't invest in it, they, therefore they're not putting the option marks themselves, that means that they can't help and support the family and others. Just, just on that point there, it also comes down to a mindset, because if we've got, if we've got say, a, 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 a comfortable mindset, so ignoring the term lifestyle business, if we've got a comfortable mindset and we don't need growth, unnecessary expenditure like marketing and, and different things like this and self-development, they might not be a priority. Whereas if you've got a growth mindset, if you see your business here but you want to see it, say, in 12 months' time in a much better or a different place, the idea of spending money is a no-brainer. It's like, well, I've got to spend £2,000, £5,000, £10,000, whatever it is, to get to that point. Yeah, I may lose a bit of money now, but look where I could grow to. So it's all actually, if you think about if you're listening to this now or watching this now, think about the mindset that you have but more importantly, think about, I'm here right now, think about the position you are right now that you're in it, either pause the video and, and think about this for a second, make sure to play the rest of the video. Um, think about where you are right now and think about where do I want to be in 12 months time, then actually start envisioning it, start thinking, what would I do with that extra money in the bank, where would my family, where would my life, where would my business be able to go? in order to actually, what would happen if I achieve that? So it's, it comes down to mindset as well, so decision paralysis, it's it's fundamentally, in my opinion, hundred it's hundred percent mindset. It's where you want to be and how you want to get there. Yeah, quite. And at the end of the day, it's if you know where you're wanting to get to, and you've got those goals in mind, you just have to put actions in place to achieve those goals. If I can just mention on that point there, those actions are actually quite, we've broken them down into seven transformational steps, which we actually com we committed in an entire webinar, which is free for people to join in and actually see that as well, haven't they? So, so what we've actually done is those seven steps we believe are the best way to achieve the, the results that we're talking about, we've actually outlined for you in seven transformational steps. So that is available for free for everybody to watch. In terms of this video, is there anything else we need to cover at all? Uh, no, I think other than the fact I would just simply say, if you know that you need to do something about it, but your, your mind is telling you you can't afford to invest, and you know by investing in that money it's going to help you put your business in a different place. Mm. It really requires a different sh a shift in mindset. You can do so much now to actually put yourself and your business in a different place in three or six months' time. And one thing that I believe in firmly is that we are, a, we are an average of the people we hang around with most. Some people say five, seven, or three, whatever the number is. I think you're an average of the people you're around. So if you, if you see some dysfunction, if you see some things in your life that aren't going quite right, look at the people that you're around. Have you got people around you in your business that are encouraging growth, that are encouraging the goals that you want to achieve? Or are they in the same position you are and you want to get out of that? So if they are, think about not only where you want to be in 12 months, but think of the closest people around you and see if they even need changing or if they need to be improved themselves. And that's, that's quite a nice way to finish. Yeah, that? it's good. Thanks, Al. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Alex from Business Growth Bureau alongside Rupert Honeywood, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Cheers.